In this video, we're going to continue to look at our monosaccharides. Now, in the previous video, we saw monosaccharides in this linear form, but monosaccharides can also form a ring. And so, if you look at an alcohol plus an aldehyde, or an alcohol plus a ketone, and if you remember back from organic chemistry, this alcohol group can attack the carbonyl carbon, forcing this carbonyl to move these two electrons onto the oxygen. The oxygen will uh, steal a hydrogen um, from water and you'll make what's called a hemiacetal or hemiketal. Now this process happens in sugars as well. Sugars have a carbonyl carbon and they have an alcohol. And so what usually happens is that the carbon that is furthest, or the chiral carbon that is furthest away from the carbonyl carbon, that alcohol group will come and attack the carbonyl carbon, and you form a ring. So you can form six-membered rings and five-membered rings doing this. And a six-membered ring is called pyranosis, and a five-membered ring is called furanosis. So here we have uh, beta d fructofuranose or beta d glucopyranose. And I'll talk what these betas mean in a second. So when you form the cyclized sugars, your former carbonyl carbon, the one that got, a, got attacked by your alcohol group, um, is now chiral. And we call these carbons the anomeric carbon. So when looking at a ring, the anomeric carbon was your former, former carbonyl carbon, and it got attacked by an alcohol group. So it is the carbon attached to two alcohols, or sorry, two oxygens rather. That is your carbonyl carbon. And so you can have alpha um, carbons or beta carbons. Rather, the anomeric carbon can be in the alpha position or the beta position. And the way to know if something's in the alpha or beta position, you first find the carbonyl carbon, and you see what direction is my alcohol group pointing. And you compare that to what direction your CH2O8 of carbon 6 is pointing. So if the CH2OH in the OH of your carbonyl carbon are pointing in opposite directions, we call that an alpha sugar or alpha anomeric carbon. However, if they're pointing in both the same direction, we call that beta. So that's how I remember it. OH, CH2OH in the same direction, they're both pointing one way, beta. Opposite directions, alpha. Now, this ring, this cyclization and this ring formation, um, a sugar can uncyclize and go back to this linear form. And so in, when you're back in your linear form, this carbon-carbon bond can rotate. It's free to rotate. So you can, go, you can switch from alpha to beta sugars in solution. And this happens all the time. And if you have two sugars, and they're only different in the anomeric carbon, we call this anomers. So alpha d glucopyranose and beta d glucopyranose are anomers of each other. Uh, they're free to rotate, and we call these muta rotations. Now, we draw sugars flat on our piece of paper in the ring form because they're easier to see, but in reality, they're not planar molecules Rather, they assume the chair position, as shown here. Um, and you can have a boat position. If you remember, the boat position means that uh, this carbon is actually pointing upwards, but the boat position um, leads to steric hindrance. So what you can have in the chair is that you can have your different sides flip. This one will flip down, this one will flip up, and that's what's being shown here. So you can switch these positions, um, but you're really not going to be in the boat because the boat will lead to steric clashes. And that's it for this video. I will see you in the next.